Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, we are at June 3rd. We are three days into the pistol brace rule. There's some new data out, and I want to share that with you. Now, as you know, there were four options that the ATF gave you in complying with this rule, one being surrender, the other being destroy, the third being, of course, reconfigure, or the fourth doing the amnesty registration. But technically, there was a fifth option. And that fifth option appears to be the one that most of you have decided to exercise, which is tell the ATF to go pound sand. So today... Let's spend a few minutes, let's go over some numbers, let's do some extra number crunching, and let's talk about the ATF rule that no one is complying with. Okay, so the issue we are talking about for the 738th time today is ATF's pistol brace rule. Now, as we know, we had up until May 31st, to get our firearms registered if we were going to leave them in their original configuration. Now, if we destroyed them, surrendered them, or reconfigured the firearm, the purview of that rule would not apply. Now, I want to thank the folks over at Ammoland.com and another fantastic website called The Reload. They both published articles about this in the last 24 hours. And according to ATF data, According to statistics from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, approximately a quarter million firearms have been registered now pursuant to ATF's amnesty registration. You sit there and you go, wow, that's a lot of firearms. Not really. The exact number, according to ATF, is 255,162 firearms were registered by midnight on May 31st. Now, let me explain to you how that number demonstrates that there is mass, and I do mean massive, non-compliance with this rule, okay? Now, let's go back and take a look at some numbers, and we'll, what we're going to do here is we're going to use conservative estimates, because anytime we're trying to estimate things, we always want to err on the correct side of things and not on the incorrect side of things. So, ATF estimated that there was somewhere between 3 and 7 million braced firearms. Now, I think that is a gross underestimate. I think there's at least one state in the union that probably has somewhere between 3 and 7 million braced firearms. And so the Congressional Research Service estimated that there was somewhere between 10 and 40 million firearms. So that means we're running a range here somewhere between 3 and 40 million. Now, that is a huge, huge range. For the sake of this hypothetical, what we're going to assume is that there was 20 million braced firearms in the United States at the time that the rule was published. Now, again, I acknowledge that that probably is a gross underestimate of how many firearms there truly were, but again, that's the number we're going to use. Now, of that 20 million, let's just say for the sake of the hypothetical, that one half of those firearms were either reconfigured destroyed or surrendered to the ATF. Now, we all know that that is a gross overestimate of the percentage of firearms that would have fallen into this category. But in even under those very favorable facts to the ATF, that would still leave approximately 10 million firearms which were eligible for a registration. Now, if we take a look at the fact that there has been 250,000 and change firearms registered, and you divide that by 10 million eligible firearms, well, then the percentage of firearms that have currently been registered under the Amnesty Pistol Brace Rule is 0.025%, okay? We're not even at a half a percentage point. We're not even at a quarter of a percentage point. Now, let us also remember that there are millions of gun owners out there who are actually currently exempt from this rule because of three injunctions, okay? We know in the case of Mock v. Garland that any person who's a member of the Firearms Policy Coalition is right now enjoying the fruits of that injunction. We also know in the case of Second Amendment Foundation versus ATF that all members of the Second Amendment Foundation are currently enjoined from enforcement of the rule. And then the case that we have yet to really spend a lot of time talking about, but you need to be aware of it, is the case of Texas versus ATF, in which the court ruled that the members of the Gun Owners of America 
are currently enjoined from enforcement of this rule. So if you are a member of the Firearms Policy Coalition, if you're a member of the Second Amendment Foundation, or you're a member of Gun Owners of America, currently you are enjoined from the rule. And again, I think that goes to show how powerful and valuable membership in those organizations are and why we're going to put links for all three of them down in the description box for you to join. Now, the other thing you need to be aware of is that these injunctions not only are beneficial in the here and now, but they also demonstrate that there is some very positive developments likely to come in the upcoming litigation. Because let us not forget, that in order for a court to grant an injunction, two things have to be demonstrated. Number one, that the plaintiffs are suffering irreparable harm, which obviously was the case here. And the second thing, and this is the most important thing here, is that the plaintiffs also have to demonstrate that they're likely gonna prevail on the merits of the argument. That means that the law and the facts are in all likelihood on their side. The fact that three courts now have reviewed these motions and granted them in three cases is a very positive sign. Another positive sign for all of you who are really concerned about this rule is that the Fifth Circuit, in the case of Mock v. Garland, has put that case on expedited review, which means that it is actually set for argument on June 29th. So we can have a ruling from the Fifth Circuit as to the legitimacy of this rule before the 4th of July. Now, I know to many of you that seems like, well, that's a long way off. But I can assure you, having worked in the court system now for 30 years, that if you have a motion which is already set to be heard at the end of this month, that is moving at legal light speed. So the Fifth Circuit has clearly emphasize that this is an important issue and it needs immediate resolution. That also bodes well for the plaintiffs and for all of you lawful and responsible gun owners nationwide. Okay, so once again, according to ATF, there have been 255,162 firearms registered through the Amnesty Form 1, a whopping 0.025% if there's only 20 million of these, if there's more like 40 million of these, well, you can do the math yourself. So, my friends, this is what mass non-compliance truly looks like. Listen, you may have more questions about the pistol brace rule, the injunctions, or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. If you guys do, you should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we preach all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.